Writing is a highly independent task. You have to be very disciplined and self-motivated. And somehow, when you see other people publish, you only hear from them when they say, yay, I published in Cell, yay, I published in Nature Science. Well, good for them, but I believe it's also important to understand how these people get there and what are the breakdown little steps. There's no writing day. So I'm going to revisit SMART Go in terms of very specific case on writing. I hope this resonates with some of you who are non-native English speaker and for the native English speaker, learn this for your non-native friends because you probably have to supervise students in the future. They are hard worker, good student, good researcher, and if somehow they struggle with writing, show them this video. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the community for you, PhD student and postdoc out there to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips for your PhD. If you haven't met me yet, my name is Vera Chan. I built this community of PhD Coffee Time to encourage more conversation like this. I hope by the last video, I have successfully made you re-identify why should you be writing scientific publication and why you should consider making this publication before your thesis. I hope I convinced you that there are more beyond the impact factor. I hope from the last video, it also make you slightly more concerned about how you can become an effective writer. As a non-native English user, I struggle a lot with writing and it's a long journey to come to this point of being comfortable mastering the writing and the language and knowing English is only part of the barrier. So I hope by the end of this video, you will feel more determined that you can do it as well. You also will feel determined that you will write daily and you will have more ease about the idea of writing and maybe you will find joy in writing as well. If I need to start any piece of writing, defining what is writing is the important step. A lot of people imagine writing is, oh, I have a Saturday that I have no friends, no party, I block off all my distraction and it's going to be my writing day. doesn't really happen that way and in fact you have to be writing continuously to build anything that is creative and innovative if you want to build on an idea you need to journal every day if you need to produce any marketable product you need a notebook and you need to write down your thoughts the same thing for PhD if you need to write your idea you can't expect yourself to crunch it like your undergraduate six hour crunching writing no longer work for you as a PhD. You have to define what's writing. Writing is not just typing, methodology, introduction, discussion, anything that gets you closer to publishing your paper is considered as writing. And you have to block off time to enable yourself going and proceeding with it. If you want to be a good writer, you have to be really good at being consistent you have to be good at being focused and being smart, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time sensitive. And in this case, I hope to make this smart um, as a T for time tracking. You have to track all your writing tasks to really have an honest understanding of how hard you can write every day, how much you can do by the end of that day. And this track time, I recommend if you are new, you have to start with 30 minutes. I mean, 30 minutes of no distraction, no cell phone, no email, no messages, nobody can call you, put your cat in your room, 30 minutes. That's, that's enough. If you are just starting and you are not writing daily, 
and it's important to build that muscle group over time. It's like going to the gym. If you don't already work out, you have to build it slowly. You can't just say, I have to start six hours this weekend, but you never written for the last month. That's impossible and you are likely to fail your plan. So the trick is you have to break them down. Anything you can fit in 30 minutes should be your measurable specific task. The laundry list of writing is what you need to start learning how to do. You can come back for 30 minutes, take a break, come back 30 minutes. And you know, if you are more trained, you can do several 30 minutes, then it become a three hour working day on writing, which is not bad. Not many people can say they write three hours, two hours. Activity you can write on your laundry list of writing. Draft zero, what does it mean? Meaning you have a word document with blank pages and you're just thinking anything out loud and write it down. Write down what you need to articulate, what's already known, what's the unknown. You're pushing the boundary of knowledge, remember? So you list out everything that you read and known, list out all your questions you don't know, and you track your time in 30 minutes. And believe me, you will have something by that 30 minutes, even if it's a zero draft. And this is a draft that you're not going to share with anyone. It is for you, for yourself tomorrow, to come back to it and you can criticize yourself and you will add it. And guess what? By the time you have something on that paper, you are editing and you are not facing this blank, intimidating white sheets that you are going to get nightmare from. After you have all this information collected, write outlines of how you would put them together as the flow of your discussion or the flow, which one is figure one, which one is table one, and why should they go first? Methodology, go and track your 30 minute thinking about what are these smart goals. This is an important session that you need to spend the highest quality bring bandwidth in the morning to sort that out. And once you have a list, it become a laundry list. What are the articles to fill in your outline? You know, you have all this flow of idea. You probably need to follow up on each and single one of them and find 20 more paper. And that's the point people usually get overwhelmed and you get into this fatigue of reading. Um, and if you manage your outline well, um, you can make it a 30 minute chunks of researching only in this one topic, writing down what to follow up next and take a coffee break, 30 minutes, and then come back and you fill up, you, uh, you read those paper, it's another 30 minutes, prioritize the more important one and get rid of the not really relevant one and come back 30 minutes later and put them in your own writing is also another 30 minute task. Searching on the web of science is consider as writing, you're going to connect the dots. It is an essential part of scientific writing. And I put a lot of respect whenever I got on web of science, web of science browser do not go with Facebook browser. They do not go together. When I open a web of science browser, that's it. It will have my undivided attention for the rest of the 30 minutes. It's like my religious activity. The definition of writing is whatever it takes for you to get published. You can also use your 30 minutes into more trivial things that will make your day even longer for writing and more productive. Things like checking the formatting requirement from the journal you need to submit to, building a figure for your journal. If you submit to Joe, video editing is writing. Editing your reference list and make sure the citation software is not going to, by default, make it embarrassing. So if your brain is really fatigued, you can't write, then go back to the 500 word you wrote yesterday and edit it. And guess what? 30 minutes flies past and the quality of writing is going to be better. If you're writing materials and methods, block out time to read your notes, your scribble in the lab, write it into tidy handwriting, tidy it up in your materials and method. I really hope this video is going to motivate you to know it's not hard to write. Even you're not native English speaker. I come from Hong Kong. There are so many people who speak much better English than I do. Make sure you write every day for at least 30 minutes and track your time. You can't improve if you don't have a measurement. If you don't have a metric of knowing yourself, you're not self-aware how long you can write. 
you're not going to improve. So don't cheat the system. Start tracking your time. It can be with a timer from your phone. It can be using Toggle. I'm just really a big fan of Toggle because it gives me a lot of clarity on how good I am or how bad I am with my productivity of that day. And I hope by the end of this quarantine period, you're going to find this new joy of writing and creating as a writer. The broken down little steps are the motivation of me creating this channel. I really hope someone would have taught me this when I was younger. <laughs> if you want to be in academia or not for your career, academic writing is unique to PhD applicants for jobs. You're going to be a lot more competitive if you know how to write clearly. And that's like going to the gym. I like to challenge you to work on your muscle of writing. So comment below, how long can you be writing continuously without distraction? We are all starting in a different place of our journey. So it's okay. It's okay if you don't write every day, you start writing every other day. It's already an improvement and you need to be realistic and honest with yourself. You can't cheat to get progress. It's like workout or a marriage. You have to be honest with yourself. Go with the honest feeling of how you're progressing. Thank you for watching. If you find my video practical for your level, or if you are too advanced already and you may found it too basic, that means you need to share my video to someone who need this and that will make their journey a lot easier. If you haven't met the postdoc in your lab that take you in a coffee break and motivate you and encourage you so that you get through the dark time of your PhD, then this is the channel for you. I hope that by opening up my experience, my own tips, it's going to give you the support that you may need during the time that you feel frustrated, you feel a little isolated. I hope you will come to this channel and find support. And don't forget, I also got featured channel here in this page, part of the key to successful PhD or anything in life is to surround yourself with like-minded people who are positive and supportive. It's not just you and your PI. It's about intentionally building your peer support system. So I'm really grateful that I found Kevin, I found Mary, I found David. There are so many more other great content that is helpful for PhD. It looks really crazy if I hold this the whole time when I speak. So now I found a platform. And what is this? <laughs> it's my cat tree. I have no furniture. It's better to free my hands and do more hands motion. So now you may be more engaged listening to me. And that's really thank you to my friend in India, Rama. He gave me this valuable comment on my video. If you find anything that you want me to improve in my videos, send a message or write a, write a comment below. My feeling won't be hurt and I'm going to improve it. Thank you for watching and I will see you the next time.